All right, what is up, everyone? Welcome back to the Heart to Heart podcast. My name is Hafiz, and this is the third season and 18th episode. And today we have a special guest, Alexis. Welcome. Thanks so much for having me on. <laughs> Please don't make this complicated. What a brother, tell me, wasted on a love. All right, so we are going to be starting off as usual with the gaming aspect of it. For those of you who don't know how it works, we're going to be asking each other three random questions, and we're going to have to incorporate three random words into our answers. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's do it. So my first question for you is, if animals could talk, which would be the rudest? And your words are skin, perfume, and high. All right, I'm going to go with a cat. Cats would definitely be the rudest. They like to get under your skin. Um, they do not care whether you're high or not. <laughs> and they, um, they have their own special perfume that they don't care about other people knowing about. Nice. Well done. All awesome. right. So now it's my turn to ask you, right? Yeah. All right. So my question for you would be, uh, if you could have one superpower, just one, um, what would it be? And the, uh, the words you're going to use are scratch, opposed, and thesis. Okay. First off, I wouldn't be opposed to having a superpower. So, I mean, it'd be, I, f I think, I feel like it'd be really, really cool. Um, but I wouldn't want something that just scratches the surface. I'd rather something that's more in-depth, something that someone would have to write a thesis on to really understand how it works. Um, so probably something as cool as identifying exactly what's in every food that's made. For someone who's been trying to watch, like I've been trying to watch what I eat, so if I'd immediately be able to tell exactly what's in each, wow, that'd be, that'd be really cool. So that's, uh, that's the one that I would pick. Nice. I like it. I have not heard that right. superpower. <laughs> <laughs> well, could be really useful right now. Could so, be, yeah. could be. Yeah, definitely. All right. So my next question for you is: If you were an artist, what would you paint on your first day? And your words are slow, captain, and different. So if I were an artist, I um, would likely be doing kind of abstract things. I think I'm not. I am not a person who could um, really be able to, uh, to, to paint things in a realistic way. So I'd paint things that are very different, that people look at them, they can't really identify, is it the captain or is it the ship or is it whatever it is? And I would probably um, be painting really slowly over time because I would want to see my painting evolve. Nice. I would want to see that too. That, that sounds pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie. Awesome. Okay, so my next question for you is, if time travel were possible, would you rather go into the past or into the future, assuming you could only do one? And your words, which this is perfect for this, are century, Congress, and smart. I don't know if this would be the smartest choice, uh, but probably go back a couple of centuries, because I know if I'd go... If, I, if I'd go a bit in the, into the future, uh, I'd be scared about what's to happen because I don't like the way the direction is heading into. Um, one part of that that I don't like is the way Congress is and the way it's run and so on and so forth. Um, but it's kind of uh, scary to see the direction we're heading into. And on the contrary, it's actually cool to see what things were before, considering we know how it ended right now so uh yeah that would be that would be my my choice to go a couple centuries back i like it doing the through line instead of trying to scare ourselves with what's uh what's going on with exactly <laughs> exactly that's the spirit all right and my last question for you is what is the most annoying color and your words are stuff expression and complain okay so i um think that orange is the most annoying color. It is the, the color of complaints, right? It is, the, it is loud, it is out there in front of you. It is very, um, it has a lot of expression within it because you always feel a certain kind of on edgeness when, um, when you're around orange. And it, just imagine if like you're in a room and all the stuff in your room is orange, how is that gonna make you feel? Are you gonna feel calm? Or are you gonna feel just a little bit on edge 100% of the time? Cannot argue with that. <laughs> Solid points. 
All right, fantastic. And then for your last question, um, my question for you is, what is your favorite meal to cook and why? And the words you need to use are old, structure, and tradition. This might be a tradition of the past, uh, and some people might call me old school, but uh, I love chicken and rice. It's just very basic, and it's not too many calories. For someone who's trying to stay... Uh, for someone who's trying to maintain physical fitness, you need to add structure into what you eat and into your day. And so having just chicken and rice and maybe sauce to like make it blend it a little bit, uh, that's that's the ideal meal for me. And that's something I could eat time and time and time and time again. So, yeah, that's, uh, nice. that's that what I feel Comfort like. food. Yeah, love it. Perfect. What can I say? It just works. Yeah. And it's not a crap ton of calories, so it's like, it's like a win-win. Yes. I could not ask for anything better. And sauce. You mentioned right. sauce. You always need a lot of sauce, I feel like. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Not too much, though, because otherwise you're, you're <laughs> heading into too much calories now. So That's true. you gotta, you got to like have the right balance, you know? <laughs> true. Exactly. All right. Awesome. So we will jump into the... By the way, that was one of the best gaming sessions I've ever played. I just got to state that right away. <laughs> awesome. That was just so smooth. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, jumping, we're going to jump into the next part. Um, so you deal a lot with time management uh, and productivity. Mm -hmm. Would you mind talking a bit more about that? Yeah, yeah. So I am a time management and productivity coach. And what that means is I help people to learn how to use their time more intentionally so that they're actually using their time in service of their goals and their values, whatever those may be, instead of feeling like they're just constantly behind, constantly overwhelmed by the things that are coming at them and kind of reactive to everything all around them. And so um, through one-on-one through -on -one coaching, through group programs, through online courses, and through workshops, I help people to really provide some structure to be able to use specific strategies that will work work well for their lives um, because we're not all cookie cutters of each other right um, there's a reason that sometimes you you read a book and you think oh, now I feel terrible because I can't implement everything but don't feel terrible because you you know that wasn't written for you right and sometimes you need to kind of experiment with these things so I help people experiment with strategies until they can come to a um, you know a set of working strategies that works for their lives yeah that's uh, that's self aware, and and there are, you know, we get to situations where we we want to do everything, like <laughs> everything, and it's just it's okay. So first off, we get to situations where we want to do everything, and then when we can't do it, we get disappointed in ourselves and start mm -hmm. putting ourselves down, yeah. right? And unfortunately, that happens a lot. So if you let's say you end up someone talks to you and they bring up a situation of, and they're like, hey. Um, we, I've wanted to do this and this and this, and you notice it's a lot, mm -hmm. right? And, and you notice that's the case. How would you respond to them after that? What kind of things yeah. would you say? Yeah. Well, this describes pretty much every client that I work with, <laughs> um, because I think, you know, ambitious people who aren't ambitious and don't have like tons of stuff they have and want to do typically wouldn't come to me for help, right? Because maybe they just have the right amount of stuff in their life. But people I work with tend to be very ambitious. They want to do lots of things. And so the first, one of the first things that we have to get clear on is that no matter how much you want to do everything, not going to happen, right? Like we are all going to die with a big long list of things we didn't do. And that's okay. Like that's just part of life. It would kind of be boring otherwise. We would just always get everything done every day. We'd have nothing to strive for. But so one of the first things that we think about is changing our mindset around the fact that we can possibly do it all. Because if you don't go into things thinking like, oh, it's possible for me, I'm just failing in some way because I'm bad or whatever, then it is a lot easier to actually start doing this stuff. Because then it becomes about prioritizing and prioritizing in such a way that you can say every day, the things I did today were more important than the things I didn't do and feeling good about that prioritization, right? Um, another thing that I would say is let's get all the things that you want to do out of your brain. <laughs> like let's get them into a task system, into some place where we can actually look at them and decide. Because I think a lot of times people get really stressed out by all of these ideas just like circling in their head without making actual concrete plans on how to achieve any of it. Yeah, for sure. Um, and Correct me if I'm wrong, but journaling is a very important part of what it is that you tell people, right? 
So actually, no. Um, journaling is something that, that rarely ever comes up. Uh, some people like to journal and some people don't like to journal. Um, but I don't actually think that it's a necessary component to productivity. So getting things out of your brain and into some sort of a task system so that you can manipulate, I think that, that kind of brain dumping is important. But it doesn't have to happen in a journaling kind of a way. And I think for a lot of people, like the idea of spending time journaling is really helpful. And for other people, it's like very distasteful. They're like, I don't want to do that. That doesn't sound good to me. And so I always try to approach, um, approach it from the, the, the kind of perspective of not everything's going to work for every person. I'm never coming in and saying you have to do it exactly this way. Um, but getting so, you know, journaling can be super helpful for a lot of people. It's just not something that I, that I kind of work with everybody on because I don't think that it's essential. That's fair. That's fair. So I've talked to a couple of people, mm -hmm. actually a bunch of people yeah. who struggle with priority first struggle with identifying what's a priority mm -hmm. and then struggle with tackling that one priority and usually that priority ends up being something that takes a while something yeah. that occurs over a long period of time how does someone overcome that yeah so i think that there are a couple of things to think about i think one the first one and these are different these are different things right one is like what are your priorities and i think that that can only be done through some reflection. And so maybe this is a great time to be journaling, right? To be thinking about like, what is actually really important to me? What are my values in life? What are the goals that I have either now or in the future? Um, because only once we actually know what we're shooting for, can we then figure out if these tasks, these projects, et cetera, fit into the supporting of that goal, right? And so I would always tell people like, don't have you know, 15 different goals at once, right? Have like three goals, maybe, you know, maybe one goal is fine, but really kind of limit the number of things, the big things that you're trying to work on. Because if you try to do a lot of big things at once, you make really slow progress across all of them. And then you get demoralized because you spread yourself way too thin. And so if you have, so then we get to the, the issue of like, okay, so I've decided something's a priority. I want to work on it, but maybe it falls into the camp of it's something that's important, but it's not urgent. And so we just don't make time for it because we're, you know, there's a lot of other things we have to do. We got to get the kids to school. We have to put dinner on the table. We have to pay the bills. Like there's just a lot of other things happening. And so what I typically uh, tell people is that what we want to do is break that goal down. So whatever that goal is, we want to actually break that down so that we can do it in small chunks. Because a lot of times, right, it's like, I have a goal of, I don't know, I'll give some of my clients will say, I have a goal of organizing all of my, you know, 20,000 photos or something like that, right? But then they never do it because like, it's a long thing and they're, they look at their calendars and they're like, well, I never have like, you know, 15 hours all in a row to do this. So I'm just never going to do it. But if we can break that task down, if we can break that goal down and say, okay, well, what if we just started by doing 20 minutes a week? Right? Or what if we broke it down into its component parts and we just did you know, one at a time and we kind of scheduled that out? Now that becomes something that's much more easy for us to digest because we can fit it into smaller chunks of time. And, and I would say another thing to think about is there's this concept about goals uh, and kind of goal acquisition called WOOP <laughs> and it's W-O-O-P. And so this comes out of some research from NYU. And basically it's that when you're trying to define a goal, when you need to get move forward on it, you want to do the wish. So what is your wish? What is the goal? What, is the, what are the obstacles? So that's an O. So W-O. What are the obstacles? So identifying what might stop you up along the way. Um, what are the opportunities? So like, what are you going to get out of this? And then what is your path, right? Like, how are you going to actually make it happen? And so kind of having an acronym or something like that can be helpful too to help you to break it down into the component parts. Awesome. That's, I've never heard of that one before. That one's really cool. Um, no, I feel like it does a good job of giving you a reason as to why you're doing it and a structure behind it, both which are very important. Yeah. Um, so a lot of times people confuse tasks for, uh, t confuse tasks between important ones and urgent ones mm -hmm. in the sense that, yes, a task might be urgent, mm -hmm. but it might not necessarily be as important as another task that's important but not urgent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Does that sound confusing? Or no, it's the Eisenhower matrix, right? Okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. yeah, yeah. So, uh, like, what what is someone supposed to say to another person when they run into someone with the, who's who's operating like this? 
Well, I think that probably all of us operate like this to a certain degree some of the time, right? It's not just, I mean, and, and the reality is like sometimes there are really urgent things that, you know, that are very, you know, that do need to be taken care of. But I ask people to like, look, you know, if, if this might be hard in a podcast format, but if you think about this framework that we're talking about, right? And if you think about, um, if you think about two dimensions, one of them is urgency and one of them is importance, you can think there are like four different buckets there, right? So we have things that are um, both urgent and important. These are things we have to do first, right? Then we have things that are um, urgent, but not as important. These are things that we want to delegate to other people if possible, or if we don't have anyone to delegate to, then we want to do them after the important urgent things. Then we have things that aren't urgent and aren't important. These are things we usually don't want to do at all, right? Because they're never going to rise to the top. And then we have this other category that we're talking about, right? Which is the urgent but not important stuff. Or sorry, the opposite, the important but not urgent stuff. And the problem with this is that it won't be like this forever. At some point, that thing will become urgent. And so and then it jumps over and now you're like pulling an all-nighter for this thing you've actually known about for three months, right? And so yeah. what I find is that if we build in, we have to build in the time to handle these things over the long term, right? Now, what do you say to somebody else? Like, you're not going to, you're not going to change other people, right? So we can, I think we can lead by example. Uh, we can share with people what works for us, but it doesn't usually go over well for us to say to like a coworker or something like that. Hey, you're spending all your time in the urgent zone and I need you to be focusing in the important zone. You, but you can kind of share this matrix with them and ask them if how they're doing thing, like where, where does most of the stuff you're doing fall, right? Um, are you having trouble making for things in the important but not or, or the important but not urgent space? And if so, you know how could I help you to break that down so that we can we can make the time for it over the course of you know however many weeks, months, years sometimes to achieve a really big goal. Awesome, yeah. Okay, let's jump on to another topic: procrastination. Yeah. This happens a lot, and it's a really really big one. What is mm -hmm. your take on it, and what advice do you have for people who suffer with that? Yeah, so lots of people suffer with this. And some of my advice is actually similar to what I've said before, which is the smaller we can make the next actions for things that we're procrastinating on, the likelier we are to actually do them. People tend to procrastinate on things that are amorphous or unclear. Um, we're not sure how to do it. We haven't done it before. Uh, so we tend to procrastinate on those things because they create some sort of anxiety for us around that. If we can instead break it down so we, that we know what is the very next step we have to take to move this forward, like a small, very small, very next step to move something forward, we want to make that step so small that we can't fool ourselves into not doing it, right? We want to look at it and it's so small, we can't convince ourselves not to do that thing because that will be much easier to just kind of get the ball rolling. Another piece of advice is just start. <laughs> like it, it just literally like three, two, one blast off start, like just start because you will usually keep going if you can get yourself over that initial hump there. And then in terms of, um, there's another thing that comes up a lot with perfection or procrastination and that's perfectionism. Uh, these two things go hand in hand a lot of the time because if we were unsure about our ability to do something perfectly, I mean, nobody can do anything perfectly. Perfect's not a thing, but you know, we're striving. A lot of people are striving for it. Um, we will often push something later and later and later because we're worried. And then we finally have to do it at the last minute. And then we can kind of say, well, of course I can't be perfect because I had to do it this thing at the last minute, right? And so we kind of give ourselves a little leeway there. And so I think that thinking about why you're procrastinating on something is a really important, uh, is an important thing to, to note so that you can figure out what the strategy is forward. Because if, if the reason is like, I actually don't know how to do this, right? Then there's an answer for that. It's like, Google it, ask your boss, ask a friend who's done this before, you know, get some advice. Um, if it's that you're worried about, you know, the perfectionism piece, sometimes we can do things like using like schedule send on our emails or, you know, doing things where we're kind of tricking ourselves into, you know, doing the work first, but we're going to give ourselves a little bit of an out later, you know, because we, are, we can go back to it if we need to. And so I think that getting clear on the why becomes really important. Sometimes you're procrastinating on something because you don't actually care about it, right? Like you don't want to do it. Sometimes you're procrastinating on something because um, you're, you're not, you, there's this concept of like, do I want to do it or do I want it to be done, right? And there's a lot of things that I want to be done, but don't want to do, 
right? So like my getting my house cleaned, right? That is something that like I want to happen. I don't want to do it personally, right? Um, and so getting clear on, is this a situation of like, it's something you want done, but you don't want to do it. And in that case, can you outsource, barter, trade, um, you know, ask one of your kids to do it, you know, whatever it may be to be able to get those things done. Nice. I really like that last point, the point where you suggested that, um, do you want it to be done or do you want to do it? I feel like, I feel like a lot of people relate to, I feel like everyone relates to, to that depending on what topic we're talking about. Yeah. Um, but I, I especially relate to that on, on so many different personal levels. Uh, and I never really got the chance to think about it as much as uh, I just did right now. So thank you for that point. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask you, I got three more questions okay. to ask you. Okay. The first one is what is the biggest tip, the biggest um, productivity tip out there that people for people to know. Okay. I'm going to give you, can I give you two? Is it okay if I give yeah. you two? Okay. So the first one is just never rely on your memory. <laughs> like get stuff into a task system. It doesn't matter what you use. There's no perfect tool. Just like as long as you have a field for a date, a field for the task name, some place to write the next steps and a commenting field. So you know what you've done. You're good. So get it all out of your head because we are really bad at prioritizing inside of our own heads, especially when we've got hundreds of things that are usually going on for us. And then the second tip, um, one that can kind of give people immediate <laughs> instant relief around some of this stuff is to turn off the notifications, <laughs> like no email notifications, maybe Slack notifications if it's really like necessary just for like coming, you know, direct messages from your boss or something like that. Um, social, we don't need notifications. Games on your phone, you don't need notifications. Because there was a study that um, came out of UC Irvine, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago or so, that said that when we are distracted, and that's every ping or ding that comes through your phone or computer, and all sorts of other things, that it takes us on average 23 minutes to refocus on what we were doing. And so if you think about how many times things are get, like just distracting you all day long, and you imagine 23 minutes going poof, 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 just that one little thing can really, wow. really do a lot. That's crazy. Uh, wow. 23 minutes. That's a lot of time. A lot. Yeah. I mean, I feel like uh, most people focus best when there aren't any distractions. And, and you're right. Your phone notifications are a huge, huge distraction. Yeah. All right. Awesome. So thank you for those. And my next question for you is teach me something in life that I do not know do something in life that you do not know. Well, this is a hard one since I don't know you <laughs> other than this conversation. Um, let's see. Can, uh, okay, I'm going to teach you, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to bet, but you can tell me if you know this or not. So I'm going to teach you the grow model of, um, it's, and this is a model for coaching others in management. So it's basically like a coaching approach to management when you're working with other people and you don't want to be the person that's just like telling them exactly what to do all the time because nobody likes a micromanager. You can use this method called the GROW model. And the GROW model just is a framework for having a conversation. And so it stands for growth, reality, options, and way forward. So if somebody comes to you and they have a, you know, a problem or, you know, they, they want your help with something, I mean, this can work in your personal relationships, this can work at work, all sorts of things. You can start with like, great, what's the goal here? Like, are we both clear on what we're trying to accomplish, what you're trying to accomplish? The second thing you want to talk through is like, what's our reality? What are we facing right now? Um, what do we know? What do we not know? What are we missing? Um, you know, are there any like big roadblocks in our, you know, in our place? Uh, then knowing what we know, what are our options, right? What are the options that we have that we could think of? Which ones seem like they would make sense? Which ones do we need to throw out? And then finally, what's our path forward? Which one of these are we going to try? Um, I feel like this, this kind of model for a conversation, you don't have to do the whole thing every time, but sometimes you're having a conversation and you might say like, oh, they're clear on their goal. They understand the reality. They're having trouble getting the option. Like they're having trouble kind of pinpointing what the options are. And then that's where you can start. So I think that's, I don't know if you know that or not, but that, um, that's something that I think is helpful. I actually didn't. That, that sounds really, really helpful. So thank you for that. And last question right before we wrap it up, yeah. what advice do you have for someone in their twenties? Yeah. So for someone in their twenties, I would say, 
the more that you can do to set up some kind of a, a system for yourself and your own productivity that is not in your brain, the earlier, the better. Because I work with people often, I mean, I work with people from their 20s up to their 60s. And whenever I'm working with people who are in, you know, in kind of the later stages of their career, and they realize like, oh, there are practices that they could have learned earlier that would have made it so they didn't have to brute force their way to success. Instead of having to work so hard, they could have you know, still gotten to the same level of success, but done so in a little bit less of a chaotic, um, less of a, you know, sort of brutal day after day sort of a way. And so even just, you know, in your 20s, getting started with like, what is, how do you, where, how do you keep track of all your great ideas, right? How do you keep track of all of, um, you know, the things that you want to do and having a method for doing that will serve you so well later. Because I think what a lot of, what happens to a lot of people, right, is when you're in school, like when you're young, when you're in high school, when you're in college, even in your first job, maybe, you can keep all the stuff in your head because the stuff hasn't exploded yet <laughs> into, you know, you now met not only managing yourself, but managing other people and their work and having, you know, family and having like all of the trappings of adulthood. And once that happens, it can be a really steep learning curve um, where you just feel like balls are constantly being dropped unless you have a system. Awesome. Yeah, that is that is that is very 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 important. I I kind of realized that this summer the importance of uh, of writing things down. Yeah. Um, I feel like I don't do it enough right now, so I'm probably gonna get back to it soon. So thank you for that. But uh, yeah, aside from that, that's it on my end. Any last things that you would like to add? Uh, well, if, if people want to download from my website, there's a distraction action plan that will kind of walk you through how to get rid of those primary distractions um, so that you can gain more time back. But otherwise, I just want to thank you for having me on. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on and for sharing your wisdom. And uh, yeah, otherwise, that'll be it. Uh, take care, everyone. and I'll see you all next week. Bye.